My name is Kevin Evans. I'm a professor of geology at Missouri State University. Thanks for coming to the meeting. Thanks for coming to my talk. I'm here today to try to make a little bit of money because you just can't make it off of stemless alone. Stemless is pretty important, but sometimes you just got to make YouTube videos as well. And today, I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm going to do an unboxing of a very important tool in online education. So we're going to make this about both the tools of online education and then also we're going to talk about how you do it. So here we are with the webcam. It's got 1080p on it. It's a full HD right there. So I'm going to do an unboxing with this. And as I unbox this, you'll be able to see the most important tool that you can have in order to do online education. Because you just can't survive off a of stimulus alone. There's a box that it came in. And look here. There's a... There's a mount right there. There's got a, it's where you screw that thing in there. And there's a camera right there. That's a camera. So I have now unboxed this webcam. And you can see here that it also comes with a cord. It's permanently attached in the back here. So that's 1080p. 1080p is considered to be full HD. Although these days a lot of people would like to have 4K as I understand it. Oh gosh, what am I doing here? Um, I was going to tell you about online education, but first I better protect myself here. You all need to protect yourselves as well if you're teaching face-to-face. -face. And This year we had to teach face-to-face -face too. And uh, I had three courses this year, in fact, that were face-to-face. -face. That's historical geology and stratigraphy and also um, petroleum geology. And then on top of that, on top of that, I had to do an online course. But of course, even in those face-to-face -face courses, you wind up with students either getting sick or quarantined, and so you still have to do online parts for that as well. So as it turns out, you could do Zoom, and that's why that webcam is really important. So I could have done the whole thing from my office, but you can put a webcam in front of your lectern and then give your entire lecture. I forgot my other important safety device here. Okay, now now with my headphones on, I'll be able to interact appropriately with all of you who have questions about this presentation. So, as we get going on here, I want to tell you that I'm filming this. Oh, hold it, I'm, I'm filming it the wrong way here, I guess, uh, according to some people anyway. Ah, there we go. Now we're doing it the proper format. They don't have to blur out the sides over here to try to show you that there's like a continuation across this huge TV that you're watching this, watching this thing on. So, um, and oh yeah, uh, before we get going here, uh, you always have to synchronize these things, you know, so it's always good to give yourself a good round of applause beforehand. So that's all about online education. Once you got your your webcam, and you know how to clap, and you know what the heck you're talking about, you'll be doing just fine. So here, here's, get that online camera attached to your computer, or as you're doing like I'm doing, I'm doing a cell phone thing. So right now, I've got a cell phone in front of me recording all of this in proper landscape format. And so, anyway, that's kind of how you could do online education, right? You stand in front of your class with a mask on if you're teaching face-to-face, -face, and you got your webcam on to give them great instruction. Uh, those students who may be sick, I doubt if they'll be actually in class. Let's hope not anyway. And those who are quarantined, the ones that are quarantined, they better not be there, right? So if they're not there, they got to watch something on TV, right? So they might as well watch you. And being protected like this, it'll encourage them to be safe as well. So that is how you go about online education. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, online education. Uh, stimulus, stimulus is good to have too. Uh, we had two and then we had a third one here. So that's kind of nice. So stimulus is a good thing to have. Uh, stimulus education. If you take yourself back to March, 2020, we had spring break, 
And I was in Jamaica at the time giving a talk for the Archaeological Society of Jamaica. And um, all of a sudden the pandemic hit. I think the first case in Jamaica occurred at that very same day that we arrived. Okay, so my colleague Bob Pavlovsky and I were down there to give a talk and it's another interesting topic, but for this for this presentation, just enough to tell you that um, we flew back on an almost empty flight, uh, at least the leg from Jamaica to Miami. We were a little concerned about whether we would actually uh, be allowed to fly out of Jamaica. And so we made it. Uh, we made it back. And as soon as we got back, it was spring break. And so in spring break, they said, you know what, we're going to extend spring break for another week. And uh, after that, of course, was the lockdown order. And so the lockdown order came along and then they said, OK, you've got this one week to prepare and do all of your classes online for the rest of the semester. So um, so at the end of March, until the end of the semester, we all did online classes and uh, it was really pretty interesting to see, to try to put it all together. And uh, but it happened. And so uh, at the end of the semester, um, the administration at Missouri State University, um, they said, you know, prepare for any possible option <laughs> in the fall semester. And so uh, there went my summer. Half of my summer was recording lectures in anticipation of what I thought would be probably online only classes. And so my department head was very kind in allowing me to get a handful of things. Uh, it was part of attending an online class actually. And so those funds became available to me and I got a few items in order to be able to record uh, effectively. And, um, and we were also told, in fact, if you plan on coming to the university, you better put a proposal in because you got to tell us how you're going to clean up and, you know, you're going to wear a mask, you're going to clean up every surface that you touch and so forth. And um, it was last summer that we had our citywide mask mandate. Oh, thank you. You know, some smart people in local government here and smart people in our university as well. But come August... The MSU Board of Governors, along with the administration, they came out with a plan that says, we're going to plan to go ahead and not do online. We're in a red state here. We're going to not do online, but we're going to ask everybody to mask up. We're going to have social distancing. We're going to have sanitation stations where everybody can wash your hands and all that sort of thing. And so the issue came out to teach face-to-face, uh, -face, you know, with a few exceptions. There were some exceptions they allowed as well. Uh, by the time that fall came around, of course, we taught face to face. My thinking is that there was a magic number that we'd probably get to and then uh, probably go all online again. And of course, I was I prepared lectures for the first half of the semester, not the second half of the semester. Um, but as it turned out, we went the entire semester, the entire fall semester without having to go to fully online. And uh, they made provisions for quarantine uh, quarters for students who were living on campus. And then also we had all of these other uh, countermeasures there to protect us. And as it turns out, that roll of the dice was very effective. And uh, it's the masking that probably saved a lot of people from getting sick and actually a few people. I'm 63 years old, okay? So maybe a few of us from even losing our lives. And so uh, it worked out for us okay. Um, this semester in the spring, the same plan was in effect. We're going to do everything we had done in the, in the fall semester. And we're going to hope that we don't have another spike. Of course, everybody had a spike at that time. But uh, at the same time, these countermeasures were doing pretty well for us. If we had uh, smaller classroom sizes, we were allowed to do fully face-to-face -face, uh, classes. I've opted to do that with my petroleum geology because how else can you learn, I guess, sometimes I feel. Uh, but then for my large section of introductory geology, principles of geology, um, it is a blended course. And so we do the laboratories face-to-face -face with a few pre-recorded bits and I think that they give to the students as well but then also the lecture was online and so for me I'm teaching an online class and I'm teaching face-to-face -face as well 
And juggling these two becomes very difficult sometimes. I know some of my colleagues actually do Zoom meetings where they meet directly in their office and just film their interactions and so they can talk with the students. I'm not a big fan of that, actually. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why here in just a, well, you've already seen why now. Um, so I got my first injection on the 14th of March. I'm getting the second one on April the 9th. Uh, the the 24th of January, it was the f first round of injections for, you know, for the uh, vaccinations here in the state of Missouri for people who are 65 pretty much in, and uh, older or if you have pre-existing conditions that could uh, offer you some sort of compromised um, um, health condition. So um, by March 29th, the issue came out that, hey, it's going to be open to all students, faculty, and staff. And in fact, they plan on having mass vaccinations here on campus in early uh, May. So the modalities that were offered are astounding. <laughs> Whereas face to face, there's face to face with six students, and I don't know if, how many of you have had experience with this, but I had a lot of students who got sick. I'm thinking it's probably close to 10%, and then the ones who were quarantined, there's another 10%. Okay, so so we're looking at 20% quarantine or sick. And so some of these students, and in fact, I know this for a fact, that our students are really stressed out as well, not only by the pandemic, but also trying to just cope with the different sorts of levels of instruction that they're getting from class to class to class. So it makes it very difficult. Now, what I wanted to do for this talk is to just talk with you a little bit about what I think is really important about the online part or the blended part that's the online component. And uh, so um, with these modalities, there's a, a lot of different tools and you guys are already familiar with this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But in fact, you can talk in your le lecture. But if you're masked up and you have a webcam on, it's not going to do much for your students. OK, they're learning remotely. And so uh, what I have done, you know, was make available all of my pre-recorded lectures, the ones that I had available. And then when I couldn't have that available, I began to realize from recording all of this information that, in fact, the most important component that you can do is doing really good audio, but then also having also having this face to face. And so this little picture in a picture, they call it, is really important for conveying the emotion or the narrative that goes along with your presentation. So I did, you know, pre-recorded lectures, I guess I would say. And um, so the things that I think are important and the whole reason for me giving this presentation to begin with, audio is really important. Audio is how you convey much of the information and, and that shouldn't surprise us, right? One of the nice things, I think, is that we're always told, it's like, oh, do tiny little video presentations of 20 minutes or less. And I find that students know how to pause videos. And so I don't feel so constrained. Pretty much my limit on how long I record a lecture is the same as it is in the classroom, about 50 minutes, because they know how to stop these things. They know how to, like, wind it back. <laughs> We don't do that anymore either, but we wind it back and you can listen to a section over and over again. And the other nice thing you can do is, for me anyway, I can correct my own mistakes with annotations in the presentation. So I do Camtasia. I do uh, live audio. I do this video recording. Now, that makes it kind of a nice product. I upload it to YouTube. I put links in Blackboard in order for students to be able to find those YouTube videos. And I have, you know, a playlist that goes for each each of my classes. Um, so, A, I've learned how to stop being a perfectionist when it comes to my teaching. And uh, no, I'm not monetized. OK, so you don't have to like and subscribe to this channel. Um, but in fact, I still feel good about how I do this. OK, so the caveats are, of course, OK, there's always going to be some drawback. It takes about 10 times longer to do recorded video if you do it properly with a picture in a picture and with really good audio than what it takes to, 
deliver an online class where you've actually prepared and made sure that you got everything out there for the students. Um, and so you can also do just voiceover if you want, but that's kind of the easy way out. Uh, if you do, that's how I did it uh, last spring semester because it's like I really didn't have the gear or the equipment to make it possible to uh, to do these sort of like presentations like you're seeing right here. Uh, but but you know this year is a different year. We all evolve a little bit, and so in fact. The benefits for this also are that for our sick students or our quarantine students, this asynchronicity actually helps them to learn at their own pace. And so with that, I'm going to give you just a handful more um, information on, well, I'll just put a slide up with all of the different types of information that I can convey then uh, through a pre-recorded video that's put up to YouTube. You know, YouTube's really probably the biggest educational tool that's out there. And I've learned a lot by watching other YouTube videos. Not only the content, but actually how to do it. So anyway, that's it for now. And um, I'll give you the list here in just a second. Auditory stimulation is very important in teaching. This one's tuned to an A. Sounds like an A plus sometimes. Focuses the mind, I might say. <laughs> 